What's up guys, Andre here, and today I'd like to implement search functionality with a package called ViewFuse. You can see it in action here on my Gridsome portfolio starter, and it searches the blog posts I have. So let's go into blog and it's search for this first blog post. You can see it there. And it has other nice features like clicking off it to lose focus. Uh, it also has keyboard accessibility. So if you go up and down, it scrolls accordingly and you can press enter to go to that blog post. So yeah, let's go ahead and build this from scratch. So like I said, it's based on a library called Fuse. So you can take a look at all the options here if you wanna refine your search. And we'll be using the view wrapper around it just to make it more view friendly. So we'll be using this package. And here is our starting point. So obviously I'm using Tailwind CSS and this is a view CLI three project you can see here and not too much going on as a starting point. We have our generic app component, which houses the nav. And then I have this search component here, which is this, and it has our search input, which you can see here. And it also has the results. So let's start from there. We want to have a div with our results in it. So as a starting point, here's how it would look like. Again, it's just absolutely positioned and it's relative to this parent div, which is this input. So if I save this, is my app running? I'm not sure if it's running. Yeah, it's running. You can see a starting point here and I already have the finished results product underneath. Again, it's just tailwind classes, so it looks nice. And then we'll work on making this dynamic throughout the video. So let me uncomment this, and then you should see the nice search results. So here are the search results, and there's a nice hover on it. And here is the case when there's not, no results. So a note on Fuse.js. So as you can see, it's a lightweight fuzzy search library. And this is good if you have your index or the things you're searching for locally. So in my case, I have all my blog posts locally in Markdown files and in Grissom, I converted that to JSON. And even if I had more blog posts, this would still be a good use case. However, if you have a lot of data in say a database, this might not be the best solution and you're probably better off using a service like Algolia. But yeah, for this case, it's perfectly fine. And that's what I used. Okay, so back to our example here. So before we start using Fuse, I just wanna make this feel good to use with little interactions. So let's start with adding a V model on this input. So up here where the input is. Let's add a V model. Let's call it query. And let's add it in our state down here, which we don't have yet. So data return query. Let's make it empty by default. And over here where it says no results for query, we want this to update as we type in. So let's change this right here. So this would be query. Okay, see if this works. Okay, cool. Now let's make this results only show up if we have at least one character here. So back to our code, let's take a look at where that is. So up here, we can add a conditional. So just say only show it if, you can use show as well, but I'll use if. Query dot length is greater than zero. So it should be hidden by default. And if I start typing, it shows up. Cool. Okay, now let's make it work so that when we click off of this, it disappears. So there are packages that detect clicks off of the component that you want to click off of. But in our case, we don't need it because we are within a text box sorry, in the input box, and we can just listen for the blur event. So let's go ahead and do that. So let's make a new piece of state. 
that detects if it's visible called search results visible and set it to false and now in our conditional here let's also check if that booleaning is true and now in our input we can listen for two new events so when it's blurred so when you click off of it let's say search results visible is false you can change this you can put this in a method but i'm good with putting it in line here and it's also listed for when it's focused and it should say search result visible equals true and that should do it let's see if that works so it's there we go so we click on it or we start typing it shows and we click off of it or blur off of the input box and it disappears and if you click back on there it is cool Okay, now I want an X here, which will reset the search. So let's add that. So I'm just going to grab some code here that places that X. So it goes in here. And this is also absolutely positioned. And it's just the X close icon. And it shows, again, if the query length is greater than zero. And we'll add this reset method in a second. Let's just see if it shows up. OK, cool. And now in our code, let's add this method. So right now, it's just going to set the query. We can put it in line here, like query equals nothing. And that will work. But later on, I want to add something else. So we'll make a method for now. Let's put methods down here. And let's put reset. And like I said, this.query equals empty string. And that should reset it and hide the results. So let's try. Let me refresh. Try. OK, cool. So I also want to press escape when there's res results showing and, and, and hide them. So let's listen for the key down escape event up here. So after focus, we can do at key down dot escape. And we can just do this inline as well. Same thing, search results visible equals false. Let's see if that works. Refresh. OK, I'm going to press escape. And it hides, cool. But when I start typing, it no longer shows the results. So let's put that functionality back in. And we just have to listen for the input event. So input. And again, I can do it in line here. Just do search results visible equals true. But I have to do something else later on. So I'm going to put it in a method. And I call it soft reset. And let's put it down here. Soft reset. And just do search, search results visible is true. OK. So I'm going to type something. I'm going to press Escape. I'm going to type something again. And it shows up. Awesome. OK, now let's work on this functionality here. If you read the placeholder text, it says press slash to focus. So I'm going to be able to press slash anywhere on the page and focus the search. So you can see this across different sites. I think the first time I saw it was on Laravel.com. And if you press slash, it focuses the search. You can also see Tailwind does it. And uh, I believe even YouTube does it. So let's add this functionality. OK, so the way I want to do it is using a component. And I just want to drop a component in here and have that functionality work. So let's make a new component. Let's call it search focus dot view. And it doesn't render any template. And we can probably do this with a render list component and scope slots, but I'm just going to do it this way with an empty div just to make it a bit simpler. And for our script on the mounted callback, 
we want to define a handler. So this that handler equals event. Let's make it an arrow function. And we just, we just want to emit an event. And then we can listen for this in the parent component. So let's emit a key up event. And we can listen for that in the parent. And now we have to add an event listener on the entire window, which we'll do right here. So window that add event listener key up and it's this dot handler. Okay. And it's also clean up and have a before destroy hook and remove the event listener. So window dot remove event listener key up and this dot handler. Okay. And if you want, we can do div display none. Let's make sure to only have that within this component, obviously. Okay. So now let's import this in our search component. So down here, let's import search focus from search focus and let's add it here to our components key search focus and let's go ahead and use this so I'm going to put it right here so search focus and remember we're emitting event an event here so we want to listen for that here so we can listen for the key up event and do what we want. So we'll call a focus search method. And let's add that in our methods. So right here, focus search. And let's just alert to see if it's listening for key events on the entire window. Just to say it works here, okay. And now this should work if I did everything correctly. I'm going to refresh and I'm going to press keys and there we go. It works. So now we just have to implement listening for the slash. So let me move this up for you guys. Okay. So that we can do if let's take in the event here. We can do e dot key equals slash and we can do what we want to do and what we want to do is focus the input search box so we need a reference to that so we'll define that ref in a second but we can do riffs we'll call it search and we can just call focus so let's define that ref on the input so right here ref equals search and that should do it Let's see if it focuses. Refresh. So now focus. I'm going to press slash and it focuses and we can do our search. Cool. Okay, now let's incorporate view fuse and get some search results in here. So let's go ahead and install it. So npm install view fuse. And then this is how you use it. So let's go to main.js and let's add that. Okay. Cool. Save that. Okay. Now what? So there's two ways to use this. You can use the view fuse component, which wraps the input up in a view fuse tag but that doesn't make it flexible and we already started using the input so we can just make use of the search method so i'm going to copy this and we want to search when someone presses a key here so on the key down event so let's do that so back to our search component again let's add a key down here 
Okay, let's do a perform search method. Let's go to methods. Let's do perform search. Okay, and let's paste this in. Okay, and see what we need here. Let me just put this on its own line. Like this. Okay. So the term is query. We have that bound to our input box on a V model. This is the array of things we're searching for, and we need that. And we're going to use a JSON file for that. But you can put it straight into your state if you wanted to. But I'm going to put it in a JSON file. So I'm going to call it posts because that's what we're searching. And these are our options. So I'm going to make a posts array which will populate in a second with Axios. We also need a results array, which will be the results of your search. Just put that in there. And I'm going to put these options in here as well. So the option specific to view views. And actually, I'm just going to paste that in. Let's grab it from my code. And I'm just going to paste it in. And again, you can just look at the view views documentation. Uh, this threshold this sorts by the score based on your search and this is a threshold to see how sensitive it is and yeah you can read about it in the docs and the, these are the keys we're searching for and you'll see this in my JSON file in a second so I'm going to get that JSON file again from my code so I'm going to put it in public so I can read it from Axios and I'll call it index.json or you can call it something else, it doesn't matter. I'm going to paste it in. So here's what we're searching for. And it's just a list of my blog posts. There's a title, there's a path, and there's a summary. And this is what Fuse is going to search. So like I said, if you don't have too much data, and you can put everything in a static JSON file like this, then Fuse is a great option. But if you have a lot of data, say in a database, then you're better off using a dedicated search service like Algolia. Okay, now we need Axios because we need to pull this in. So npm install Axios. And I'm going to go back here. And let's populate this posts array with an Axios call. So I'm going to make a created hook here. And it's called Axios. I think I have to import Axios. Import Axios from Axios and let's do axios.get and it's just going to be slash index.json because it's in the root. We can do dot then grab the response and then we can populate this.posts with response.data. So let's see if this works and we're getting the data in. So I'm just going to refresh this, open up view dev tools and see if this is working. So it's in our search component and there's our posts. Cool. And it has everything in our JSON file. So we know it's working. So now back to our perform search method. Okay, so we have posts. So we're going to get back the results based on this search. And I'm going to populate this search results. So I think I named the results. It's supposed to be search results. Search results. And this will populate this. And let's see if that works as we type because we're listening on the key down. So let's see if that works. So search component. So this should, where is it? Search results should change as I type. Okay, and it does. Cool. Let's see if it changes. Yep. So it is working. So the next step is to change our template to make it work. So up here. So right here is where our search results are. We can do a v4 
and I'm gonna, grab, I'm gonna grab the index as well because I don't have a key and the index is fine. So I'm gonna grab the post and the index and search results. And we can do a key here. So key is index. And now we can set the href to post.item.path. And again, this is the path here, so this path. And now we can set the title dynamically. So that would be post.item.title and the summary would be post.item.summary. Let's delete that, post.item.summary. And let's see if this populates our search. I'm gonna refresh. There we go, it does. And we can see all of, all of our results here. As we type, it gets more specific. And we have this. This is obviously the case for when there's no results. So let's change that. So we just have to do right here. V if you can do a V show as well if you want. Results dot length equals zero. So now this should work nicely. Does it? Oops, sorry, search results. There we go. So for some reason, it doesn't search one character. You obviously probably don't want that case, but I'm not sure why. Like on the second keystroke, it does work. But if I change it to key up, it seems to work. So right here. Do key up. Let's try it again. Let's refresh. And one keystroke there. It works. Cool. Okay, so if you try clicking on one of these, you can see in the bottom left that it does go to the correct link. Obviously, there's no page for this, but it doesn't seem to work. So the problem here is blur is firing before we can click on the link. So to fix that, Let's just go here. Where is it? Right here. And if we listen for the mouse down event, which fires before blur, and it's prevent the default action, we can just set the search results visible to true, and this should fix it. So now it should work when we click on the link. Red, and if you click, there we go. And it still goes to the main page because that's the only page I have. Okay, so the next thing I wanna work on is just shortening the height of this. If there's a lot of search results, it just keeps going until the results are finished. So I wanna give this a max height. So that's simply enough. Let's just give this a max height and there's no tailwind utility for max height, but so I'm just gonna inline it here. I mean, there's, there is a utility, but there's no value for the height I want. So I'm just gonna do max height. You can set this to whatever you like. I'm gonna set it to 32 rems and see if that works. Okay, so you see it cuts off here, but now we can't scroll. To make it scroll, just do overflow Y auto, which will show the scroll bars if they're needed, and they're needed in this case, but if we only have one result, then it, they won't show. Cool. Okay, so the next thing I want to work on is keyboard accessibility. So it would be nice if I have a few results and I can just press up and down and scroll through the results and then press enter to go to that result. So let's go ahead and do that. So. I am gonna put a new piece of state in called highlighted index, highlighted index, and we're gonna set it to zero by default. And I spelled that wrong. And up here, 
right here for each search result, we just have to check if the index is the highlighted index. And then it will highlight the first one in this case, and then we'll add some methods to change that. So we want a BG blue 100 if the index is equal to the highlighted index. So this should highlight the first one, and it does, cool. So now we can listen for the up and down arrows and change that highlighted index accordingly. So back to our input, we can do key down that up and call a highlight highlight previous method, which we'll make in a second, and the same for down. So highlight next and key down dot down. And it's also add prevent because let me show you. I won't save this, but the default functionality if you press up is to go back to the front of the line, which I don't want. And prevent will hap will prevent that from happening. So let's make these methods, highlight previous and highlight next. So, okay, so methods. So highlight, let's do next first. And we can just increment the highlighted index by one. We can do plus plus, but I'll do it this way. Plus one. And let's do previous while we're here. Previous minus one. And let's see if this works. Refresh and focus and I press down and it works. Cool. Okay. So a few things here. One. Uh, it goes out of bounds. So right now I'm at zero and I press up and obviously there's no index of negative one. So it doesn't highlight anything. So let's fix that first. Let's fix the bounds. So for previous, we just have to wrap it in an if statement. So if this dot highlighted index is greater than zero, only do it when it's greater than zero. And for the next case, we can just do if it's less than the results minus one, the length of the results. So this dot search results dot length minus one. And now it shouldn't go out of bounds. So let's try. So I'm pressing up here and nothing's happening. Good. And the scroll doesn't work yet. We'll make that work in a second. I'm pressing down here and nothing happens. So what you can also do is you can make a cycle if you want. Like if we're down here, then we can just press down and then it go back up to the first result. Uh, I think that's how the traditional thing works. So if I have this and I press down, yeah, it cycles like that. But I'm good with just keeping it in within the bounds. Okay, so now let's get the scrolling to work. So let me refresh this. So if we have a few results and there's a scroll bar, we want to be able to scroll through it. So let's do that. So we need a reference to the currently highlighted search result. And then we can use the native browsers scroll into view method. So in here, you, what you might think to do is add a ref to the actual thing we need, but we can't do that because it's not guaranteed to be in the same order as the list. So what we can do is put a ref on the parent. So right here, say ref equals results. And then we can just use the currently highlighted index 
to get the item we want. So now we have a reference. We can do, um, let's do it for next, right here. So I'm just going to paste it in to save some time. So we're just going to do this refs children, and then we're going to pass in the highlighted index, which is selected. And I'm going to take this out for now, just to show you how it works without it. And we can call the native browser scroll into view. So I also want this up here in previous. Okay. So now this should scroll. Refresh, type in something. But as you can see, it jumps to the top and the currently selected one it stays on the top until there's no more room. And that's not how we want it to scroll. So to fix that, we just have to add that parameter block nearest. So to add to both. And now it should behave the way we want it to. Say, there we go. So it scrolls. Perfect. So that's how we want it to behave. And it feels really good. So now let's just extract this into its own method. So this dot scroll into view. Let's put that here. Let's remove this and let's add a method. Scroll into view and space that in. And that should still work. Cool. So just like clicking the link, we want this to work on pressing enter. So we want to press enter here and then go to the specific page. So let's go ahead and do that. So again, we have to listen for the enter key up here. So at key down dot enter equals say go to link. Let's make that method. Go to link. And we can just do window.location equals this dot search results. And we have the highlighted index. Index and dot item dot path. And that should work. Refresh. Let's go to freelance versus full time. And that works cool. However, there's one case we have to take care of. If we just press enter here, there's nothing selected. So we get an error. So we just have to check for that. I'm just going to paste that in. It's just a check if there is a result. That's it. And then we can close that. Indent. And now that should work or it should at least prevent this case. So I press enter. Oops. Search results. Oops, so I'll refresh. Just press enter. Okay, cool. And let's just double check to see if this works. Awesome. Okay, so let's clean up a few bugs here. So one bug uh, where we select one down here and then we keep typing, but the index does not change. So it should be reset to zero every time we make an input. So all we have to do is set the highlighted index in our reset methods. So right here. So that's why I made a method because I want to set it back to zero. So this dot highlighted index equals zero. And same for the soft reset. Let's put that there. And now every time we input it goes back to zero. So G, so it's down here and then we add something else, it goes back to zero. Awesome. So one more feature I never got to, which I wanted to do is highlighting the current result based on what you typed in. So in this case, it would highlight grid wherever it can find the string grid. 
And that's how Algolia works. For example, in Tailwind, if you just search for something, say height, there we go, it searches the results. And I haven't gotten around to that yet, but I did find a code pen that uses view fuse and it works that way. So let me show you. So right here, I'm going to change the highlight color to something you can see because right now it's hard to see. So I'm going to change it to red. And now if you search, say LAD, there we go. It highlights as you search. And that's something I want to implement, and I probably will eventually just keep an eye out on my repo for the Gridsome Portfolio Starter. But for now, I have not looked into it too much, but that would be a nice addition. So there you have it, guys. We managed to build out this search component using View and View Fuse. We also made it very nice to use, adding keyboard accessibility in our search results. So a quick review. We can highlight with slash, we can search and the results come up as we type. We can use our keyboard, we can press enter, we can click on them, we can press escape, we can click off of it, and we can reset it with the X. So yeah, very nice and feels good to use. Hope you learned something new and I hope you can use it in your projects. Please like, comment, and subscribe if you haven't already done so. Thanks for watching guys. See you in the next one. Okay, thanks. Bye.